Hey guys, Miss Peterson here, wearing my chemistry sweater because it's December 1st. Um, today we're going to be talking about solubility equilibrium. This is the first of many equilibrium concepts, concepts you'll learn about in chemistry. Uh, we're going to be talking about the solubility product constant, aka KSP, in your textbook. This is section 17.4, and we'll be doing lots of other um, activities to reinforce these concepts. So, first things first, I need to apologize. Remember when I had you memorize those solubility rules and I said these salts are insoluble, they do not dissolve in water? I lied. Sorry. Actually, when we say soluble, basically soluble means that greater than 3 grams will dissolve in 100 milliliters of water. But those salts that we consider insoluble, maybe only 2 grams of them dissolves, or 1 gram. So they do actually dissolve a little bit. Basically, if you have something like sodium chloride, which is an insoluble salt, most of it is going to be solid. So most particles are going to be bonded together in that solid form. But what's going to go on is you're going to have a very low concentration of the silver ions and the chloride ions. And this is in equilibrium. So basically, we have the solid, and every now and then, some of these ions, they're breaking off. At the same time, some of these ions over here, they're coming together. So they're breaking off and coming together and breaking off and coming together at equal rates. Okay? And that's what this equilibrium arrow means. Okay? So I don't want you to think that, oh, well, just a tiny bit break off and then we're done. Basically, those tiny little bit break off and then some of them come together and some of them break off. And that's what equilibrium is. Okay, cool? Okay, cool. So. We're going to be writing equilibrium expressions. Now, all equilibrium expressions, whether they're solubility or acid-base or anything like that, they all have the same form. If this is our reaction, this is what the equilibrium expression looks like. You have your products on the top and your reactants on the bottom. And the coefficients here become exponents here. Okay? This is what it always looks like. And also, these square brackets, in case you don't remember, they mean concentration. And whenever we're doing concentration, it is always going to be the molarity or the moles per liter. Products over reactants. Another important note is that solids and liquids do not get included in the equilibrium expression, okay? Which makes it really easy for solubility constants because we're only going to have the ions. We're not going to have a solid. So when we're writing KSP, there's never going to be a denominator. It's only going to be those ions. If we look back up here, okay, it would only be the silver and the chloride, okay? So let me show you an example. Say we were writing the equilibrium expression for the dissolution of calcium fluoride into calcium ions and fluoride ions. We would put the concentration of those ions into brackets. So Ca2 plus and F minus. Okay? The solids don't get included, just the ions. And because we have two fluoride ions being produced, we take that and we add it here as an exponent. Okay. For silver chromate, we would have Ag plus, we have a 2, so it would be squared, times the chromate. Polyatomic ions always stay together and they just go inside those square brackets. Go ahead and try the calcium oxalate on your own. Okay, check and see if you got it right. You should have just the calcium and the oxalate. No exponents at any of them there. Now, what's really cool is that we have a lot of it, these 
So one of the cool things about these equilibrium um, constants is that scientists have already figured them all out. Okay, they're found out in a laboratory using a lot of spectroscopic methods and very careful analysis. And that's how we get these big giant tables. Okay, these are reference tables you can look up online. They're in the back of every chemistry textbook ever. But they have all of the solubility constants for our insoluble ions. So we just wrote the equilibrium expression for um, calcium fluoride. That value of it is going to be 3.4 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, and we can just look that up. For silver chromate, it's going to be 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12. So it's super easy to look it up, and this allows us to find out a lot of things about the concentrations of ions in solution. I'll show you guys a little bit about how it's used. Oh, sorry, wanted to note one more thing. If you look up here, these are the solubility products at 25 degrees Celsius. They are specific to a temperature. Typically at higher temperatures, more ions will dissolve, and that changes this equilibrium expression. Okay, well not the expression, but it changes the value of it. So remember that, that they're specific to a temperature, and always make sure that the temperature you're looking it up for is the temperature that you're doing the experiment at, or doing the calculation at. So, how we use them is we're going to be using them to find concentrations, and we're also going to be given concentrations and use them to find the KSP value. So those are the two most common ways, and let me show you an example. Lead 2 chloride dissolves to a slight extent in water according to the equation below. We have our lead chloride and it dissolves into lead 2 plus and 2 Cl minuses. Now we're going to calculate the KSP if the lead ion concentration, okay, so the lead ion concentration was found to be 1.62 times 10 to the negative 2 molar. Okay, first things first, we need to write our equilibrium expression. So our KSP will be PB2 plus multiplied by CL minus. We have that 2 as a coefficient, so CL minus squared. Okay. Now we can plug in our numbers. We know the value of the concentration of lead, but we're not given the concentration of chlorine. But we can find it out. Okay. Because there is two chlorines for every one lead, Okay. They all came from the same thing. They all came from this solid. We know that if the concentration of lead is, is the 1.62 times 10 to the negative 2, the concentration of chloride must be 2 times that. So that's going to be 2 times 1.62 times 10 to the negative 2, which when you plug into your calculator, I always need a calculator on these ones, if you don't remember how to plug in scientific notation, on a lot of calculators, they have an EXP button. On some calculators, you'll see it as a double, like capital E. So that means times 10 to the. So the value of the concentration of chlorine is 0 0.0324, which if you get it in scientific notation, it'll be 3.24 times 10 to the negative 2. These are the same numbers. It doesn't matter which one you use. It is exactly the same. It just depends on what mode your calculator is in. Okay, now we're ready to plug on in. So we plug in our values. Okay, we have the concentration of lead multiplied by the concentration of chlorine that we just found. And that number is squared. Okay, so you plug that in all into your calculator. 1.62 times 10 to the negative 2 times 3.24 times 10 to the negative 2 squared. And I got, change my calculator back into scientific notation mode so I can see it easier. I got 1.70 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. 
These equilibrium expressions are unitless, so don't put units on them. They don't need them. They don't have them. Um, so it's just the 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, ready to try another one? Copper 1 bromide. Okay, so we got copper 1, so C plus bromide is Br minus. So the formula of copper bromide is CuBr. It has a measured solubility of 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter at 25 degrees Celsius. And we're going to calculate its KSP value. So we're looking at the copper bromide, which is a solid and it's dissolving into copper plus ions and bromine minus ions. Okay, and we know our... Okay, so we know that that dissolves into its ions. And we know that of it, we know 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter will dissolve. Okay, so if we have that much of the copper bromide dissolving, that's also going to equal our concentration of our copper ions and our concentration of our bromide ions because it's just a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. Okay, so let's calculate our KSP. First, we need to write the expression. KSP equals the concentration of copper plus multiplied by the concentration of bromide minus. Substitute in our concentration. Plug it into your calculator and you get 4.0 times 10 to the negative 8. Go ahead and try the next one on your own and in the next video we'll go over the answer to that and another way that we can do these types of calculations.